Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good Thank afternoon. you so Thank much you. for being here. Welcome to Germany. How do you feel about being here? We've had a wonderful experience, great hospitality, and um, the celebration, the National uh, Citizens Festival was big and good and positive. Mm -hmm. And uh, we feel a lot of positive energy between the relationship between our two countries. Germany, uh, well, invited you here as the first African country to be a partner at the Burger Fest, which you just said is the Citizens Festival. Mm. And this year's theme is, in fact, in Swahili, Pamoja, meaning stronger together. How do you feel about your presence here and its significance in fostering global partnerships, especially during times of uncertainty? Well, humanity is um, now facing challenges that go beyond countries or communities and um, the nature of uh, the challenges that we face today are global and therefore there is need continuously for us to act in concert and together and that is why Pamoja together gives us the synergy and gives us the potential and the power to deal with uh, global challenges when we stand together. Today, Kenya and Germany are great friends. Uh, we have a history going back 180 years since the explorers and the uh, uh, missionaries to today. And it was a very privileged uh, opportunity for us as a country to be the first non-European country to be a profile partner on this uh, Citizens Festival. Okay. And it, it came out very well. Good to know. Following your recent meeting with President Xi Jinping and ongoing collaborations with other European nations, how do you see Kenya balancing partnerships with China and Europe? Well, the whole world is framed around interests. Mm -hmm. And um, we have absolutely no difficulty in pursuing our interest in the West and pursuing our interest in the East. And therefore, um, when our interests converge, we work together. And um, uh, we had a wonderful engagement in, uh, in Beijing, together with my other African colleagues. Mm -hmm. uh, I have had a wonderful engagement here in Germany with my German cou cou counterpart. I had an excellent um, engagement with President Biden when I was in the United States. And as you said earlier, it's a global village. I mean, the, 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 the challenges that countries face, whether they are in the West or in their East, are common. So and therefore, mm -hmm. there is need for collaboration between all countries to make sure that we configure and we figure out how to deal with the challenges that we have. China and Europe, which one do you think is a better partner for Africa right now? Um, I do not think it is, uh, <laughs> there, there is a measure of uh, finding out who is better than the other. Because, as I said before, uh, many people try to frame us into, are you facing east or are we facing west? We are facing forward. Because that is where opportunity is. That is where our interests are. And therefore, there are things that we can do with the West. There are things that we can do with the East. There are things that are common that we can do both with the East and the West. And I will give you an example. Uh, to deal with the challenge of uh, the serious economic issues in our continent, for example, we've asked the US to enhance their IDA concessional funding window to the multilateral development banks. Mm -hmm. We've done the same to Europe. We've done the same to China because we are all one global family mm -hmm. and China is making as much a contribution as Europe is and as much as uh, the US is. That way we can work towards the good of humanity. Let me give you another example. Mm -hmm. Climate change mm -hmm. is an existential threat to humanity. It knows no borders. It knows no south or east or west or north. It, it's, it's a challenge that faces us and we need to develop global solutions, solutions that transcend, you know, sides and, 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 and countries. Let's These are global solutions. Right. Let's go back to the bilateral exchange here. Um, these exchanges, what dividends have they yielded for the continent so far? 
especially in specific, you can speak to Kenya. One of them is the agreement we just signed. This agreement will lock, will unlock, uh, sorry, uh, 250,000 job opportunities for young people from Kenya. That is a bilateral agreement between Germany and Kenya. It, it is a win-win. You know, there is a big labor, labor deficit in Germany. There is a big lab, labor oversupply in Kenya. How do you benefit Kenya? By giving them the opportunities in here. And how do you remove the deficit here by uh, leveraging Kenya? Are your there young people are happy about this? Of course, we understand that you've just signed this agreement with Olaf um, Scholz. Uh, but you also just recently um, launched a climate resilience project, WarX, to create over 200,000 jobs for young people. How do you reconcile that with the fact that you want to send these same skilled workers to Europe, Germany, to be precise? For your information, we are injecting into the labor market a million young people every year. And even if we created half a million jobs in Kenya, we would still have another half a million who don't have those opportunities. That's why the opportunity to create resilience jobs, which I did uh, uh, last week in Kenya, has no contradiction whatsoever with what I'm doing in Germany because uh, we have a huge bulge, youth bulge. We have a demographic dividend that we have to deal with. And um, we need to create pathways and opportunities. We are creating opportunities in our housing program. We are creating opportunities in our digital market. We are creating opportunities in export of market, in export of labor, like the one we are doing with Germany. So these are different opportunities that serve the same purpose of making sure that we um, um, give our young people in Kenya the opportunity to work. Talking of bilateral as well, uh, all these um, developments that you've mentioned that have been a fruit of the exchanges you've held, uh, does that also justify your frequent travels? Because your people seem to be rattled by the mm. fact that <laughs> you and your ministers literally change clothes at the airport, missing out on some very ministerial meetings. Um, I think that is an assertion that is not correct. I mean, um, uh, you know, many people sometimes don't understand that some of these uh, bilateral engagements are necessary because some people expect instant coffee out of these engagements. President Scholz came to Kenya, uh, uh, Chancellor Scholz came to Kenya a year and a bit ago. It is the reason why we are signing this agreement today. We began the consultations then. Uh, and when I talked about then that we are going to have this agreement that will eventually facilitate many Kenyans to come to Germany, many people thought it was phantom. Many people thought it was not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Today, we have an agreement in place and there are real people now who have started that journey. In fact, next week on the 27th, mm -hmm. the first recruitment exercise will happen in Kenya. How do, so you, how do you then begin to center the interests of your people? Because first, China has been criticized to not utilize, for example, local, local workers when they come to um, implement these projects in these countries, for Africa to be precise. And they also over exploit local resources. EU, on the other hand, have a very intrusive approach, though very comprehensive to solving on the development, but is seen to undermine autonomy in a sense. You know, interests are balanced all the time. You know, um, yes, we have taken up uh, um, issues with countries that uh, uh, bring labor to our countries that we already have in country, as opposed to labor that they don't have in country, like the case we are, we are doing with Germany. Mm -hmm. It has to be mutual understanding that um, whether it is labor, whether it is uh, uh, incentives, they must be negotiated so that every country's interest is taken, in, is, is taken into account. Let's go back to when you talked about consensual resources. Um, already, of course, we know Kenya's debt situation. IMF alone, you owe about $2 billion over it. Um, how sustainable is Kenya's debt structures? Considering the fact that your previous strategies, like the tax hikes, have, hikes, have failed public resistance? Um, the situation around debt is not just around Kenya. We have 26 countries in Africa that are facing very serious uh, debt situations. In fact, many people expected Kenya to have defaulted by now. But, but I promised them 
that it will not happen under my leadership. Your debt distress and have been associated with poor locally made decisions that are motivated by taking large loans for projects that yield limited short-term returns. Precisely, and that is why I have put brakes on borrowing, that we borrowed almost 10 years ago, what we are paying uh, today, and our debt you know, increased from about 1.8 trillion, uh, 1.8 trillion Kenya shillings to now 10 trillion. It is the reason why I have said we have to look for alternative sources. Of are there financing. alternatives? Yes, we are working on alternative sources of reven raising revenue. Some of them are bearing fruit. Some of them, majority of them were in the finance bill that did not make it. But we are working on how do we socialize ourselves to making sure that we protect our country from debt distress and mm -hmm. from debt default. Yes. And we are working with partners, mm -hmm. we are working with uh, development partners, we are working with different countries. In fact, yesterday I had a conversation with uh, uh, Chancellor Scholz on their support of 90 million US dollars to support some of our interventions and another 60 million dollars. So we are also going bilateral, country by country, how we can work on concessional funds yeah. that helps drive our development. Now, Mr. President, concessional or non-concessional, these are loans and loans must be paid at a period of time. And uh, I want to say that what you're doing still, uh, t taking aid from China, from Europe, and these are not free money, aren't you building a debt trap that will be very disastrous for future generations who will not be able to pay such a debt and will continue to dance at the mercy of these creditors instead of building sustainable wealth for the African continent. Aren't you contradicting yourself? Because on one end, you're, you're saying we, we, we must not raise uh, resources domestically. We must. And then, yeah. We must, indeed. So we must. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's exactly what my trajectory has been, working with uh, our economy to make sure that sustainably, to use your words, yeah. we raised resources locally. That is, that is my focus. But even as we work on interventions, because that will not happen in a day, even as we do that, we must balance it with the reality that you need some concessional funding. And in fact, some of the concessional funding we are looking for is to retire debts that are very uh, high, expensive debt so that we progressively manage our debt situation. You've seen the agitation from young people and the recent protests, not the very uh, most pleasing situation any president or any leader would obviously want, and young people are clearly not happy with the situation as well. And of course, over 20 people died, 300 more injured. You promised to give these families some explanation. You also said that um, you will support the injured and that a mechanism is there to hold the police to account. How far have you gone in realizing these? There is a lot of progress that has been made. In fact, part of the launch of the resilience program that I launched is part of responding to some of the issues that have been raised about jobs. The reason why I'm in Germany is because of the same reasons around jobs for our young people. The same way we have a housing program responding to jobs for our young people. The same reason why we are doing the digital ecosystem because we are responding to jobs. Because ultimately, let's, let's go back to the, the, young, the protest the young, before we come wait, back to the wait, jobs, Mr. Wait. President. The protests were about opportunities. That's yes. why I'm saying. But they also did not want tax hikes, and which also bring me back to the uh, question of debt. How do you, in fact, sustain the debts? But you said there are alternatives. Yeah. But then you made a promise with your apology on X to these young people that you would ensure that it doesn't happen again and these families will be given an explanation absolutely do we see the president taking responsibility for what happened to the absolutely months? my government has stepped forward to say we are going to support the families that lost their loved ones we, 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 we are, we are we working on a mechanism to make sure that that happens it's two months we, on yeah it's two months on but you know we just i just assembled a new government they are working on the nuts and bolts to make sure that we get that there i am responding to the issues raised about opportunities and that is why I am telling you, we just launched before I came to this uh, city a 200,000 job program that will support young people that are coming from vulnerable neighborhoods, even as we respond to climate action and cl climate change. That is the essence of why we have a strained economy. 
We have a strained economy because of climate change, mm -hmm. switching from drought to floods and using our resources instead of uh, uh, developing our social sector, instead of paying our debt, we are now focused on managing the effects of climate change. And that is the reason why it has to be always a balance between what you're doing for the greater good and what you're doing to manage the crisis. I'm glad that you said you are walking a path to make sure that these people are given an explanation for the debts as well. And um, I'm sure you also know that the people who want you to terminate your social contract, the people who went out to the streets chanting Ruto Moscow, no longer appreciate mayor awards from presidents. What is your assurance to these people? Assurance is uh, they, they will see us in action. The, the, the rollout of the programs that are there, and for your information, much of uh, the protest was uh, uh, fueled by fake news and a majority of disinformation and misinformation. Mm. Or there is this tax about dogs, or there is this tax about this land, about that, and they were not there. You know, ultimately, when people realized that what was being used to drive the negativity around the finance bill were actually issues that n were not in the in the finance Was bill. that why you said there are criminals and people involved in treason? Of acts? course there were criminals involved. I mean the people who burned down parliament, the people who burned down people's businesses. Why would you call those people? But they were they peaceful pro protesters in how the beginning. Is, how does a peaceful protester burn down a building? Would you say that the actions that were seen on ground aggravated the situation in a way that young people had to also retaliate to stand their ground? Do you agree that uh, people who burn down buildings are criminals? I do not condone violence, Mr. President, but your police unless, officers. Unless you are you the commander, unless, you are the commander in chief, yes. and you're also the chair of the National Security Council. Absolutely. You may not hold the guns, yet you pull the guns. Let me tell you that the police have a responsibility to protect both the protesters and innocent citizens and property and life. And that's what they must do. It is a delicate balance, but it must be done. Lastly, your uh, interest in the AU Commission chairpersonship. How do we see this change in Africa's outlook, especially in regards to the African peer review uh, mechanism, finding African solutions to Africa's economic and governance challenges, rather than relying on external institutions that in a way undermine Africa's autonomy? My colleagues at the Africa Union have mandated me to oversee the reform of institutions of the Africa Union to make it fit for purpose. It is one of the assignments I want to undertake because it is important. I have already done the first two meetings to make sure that we align and repurpose Africa Union to respond to the issues that affect our continent today, issues of intra-African trade, issues of stability in our continent, issues of the youth bulge, issues of making sure that we use our resources to create jobs in Africa instead of exporting raw materials and making sure that we trade more with ourselves. These are critical issues that are important for Africa and institutional development, making sure that the AU Commission is fit for purpose. We have a, an accountability mechanism using the Pan-African Parliament that today is dysfunctional. And we have an AU, uh, an, an African court that makes sure that that it provides the mechanism for interpreting what we are doing and managing the nuances between the different institutions. That is my focus on making sure that we have an AU that is fit for purpose and that serves our continent, our countries and our people in the best way possible. And I'm focused on achieving it. We hope to see a positive outlook for the African continent, Mr. President. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you Patrick. so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.